hypnotizes you and eventually you're yes. just pulling a trigger. It's no longer a game. But, you know, yep. in some cases, and you have detailed it, uh, a lot of gamers have gone on to do some really violent gamers stuff. Gamers have gone on to do some really violent stuff. How did you come into the world of gaming? My cousins. I actually started at the age of two. I was inspired to play games by my cousins. I loved the way he played them. I was just so interested. It was another world. It took me, it was, I was in the zone. It took me out of everything in reality. Okay. And how do you feel on video games as a whole? Interesting, very interesting. Like I said, it takes you out of reality, and it's a whole nother world. Uh, it's really bi people are very biased towards it. They think that it's terrible or something like that, and it, at sometimes it is. It just depends on how the person looks at it. We're not not everyone's gonna come out with a gun and shoot people when you play rated M games. It's all on the player themselves, and it's all on the people who view the players. Pokemon, for example, a very popular Japanese RPG or role-playing game. It's a game in which the character captures and collects cute mythical animals and uses them to battle one another until the loser faints or is knocked out. While the characters are cute and the actions are highly stylized, it does focus on violence. Now, this is not necessarily a bad thing. Chess, after all, is just a simplified portrayal of warfare in which commoners are readily sacrificed for more valuable pieces. Yet, few people have concerns about children playing chess, and some even actively encourage it as a form of intellectual exercise. This can be considered a bias towards video games, even if they are intellectually intriguing and based upon strategy. Okay, you mentioned shooting and how people are biased towards video games. How do you feel about the stereotype, such as it takes away your social life and uh, communication skills, and that you are influenced by games? Well, personally, I think it, it's uh, it really actually helps. Instead, I disagree with with that. It helps com with communication and, and social things. You know, we, we play games, we want to talk to people about it. We have friends that we get to talk to it, to talk to talk to about, and uh, you know, we, have, we share our experiences with each other. That actually increases our social, our social activity. New online game hopes to harness leadership qualities people develop in their cyber lives to change the real world. Take a look. Wherever you are, 
whoever you are. If you found this message, it's your destiny to join us. So this is a game that promises you not only points for winning, but also teaches you about how to solve real-world problems. Joining us now from San Francisco is Jane McGonigal. She is the creative director of the online game, which is called Evoke. Jane, it's great to talk to you. I've been wanting to do this for a while. We, we, we should point out that, that Evoke is kind of billed as an opportunity as a, for a crash course in changing the world, and it's specifically targeted toward people in Africa. What are you doing? All right. Well, what we wanted to do was make a game that would give gamers a chance to develop their real-life superpowers, so creativity, entrepreneurship, courage, collaboration. Um, and we wanted to give those gamers a chance to use those superpowers to solve okay, real-world problems. And what do you think maybe some negative consequences of video games are, if there are any, in your opinion? Ooh, violence. Mostly violence. I would say violence. And... Typically for me, it would be mood. My mood changes. I do not want to be interrupted when I play games. And that's personally me. But I'm pretty sure others don't want to be interrupted when they're in the zone. Okay. Uh... Do you feel that video games could cause someone to go out and uh, shoot and rampage through the city? I do feel that that it could actually cause people to do that. It like one, like once more, it all depends on the actual player. How if they let it happen, if they let it control themselves, then it's gonna happen. It's up to them. They can, they're their own master of their mind and their con actions and behavior. They can control it. If they let it happen, it's gonna, they're gonna go on that rampage or whatever sort of violence-related action they're going to participate in. So just to sum up, you think that video games can influence someone, but it is the actual person that chooses, has control? Yes, sir. Okay. Would you blame the parents as well? I would consider the parents as well. They, they all, since, again, they also have control over their child. You let them start at an early age, they're going to, it's, they're going to grow along with it, and it's going to be harder to tear them away from it if you want them to be away from it or focus on school, study, and other things as well. Okay, now on rated M games, if you could choose, what age would you say uh, kids should be able to play those at? Really, I think the ESRB rating for it, I think it's fine at 17. I might possibly lower it by an age or so, by one more year. Because students, I mean, students and children like us, I mean, or young adults like us, we've seen, we see so much in high school and everything. It's a big slap in the face from middle school to high school, and really, it's we so we see that all the time, whether we like it or not, in any sort of form of violence or actions or behavior. Okay, last question: Do you think video games can help people learn? Uh, everyday things or things that may help them in the real world or is it just useless knowledge for parents i think and this day and age i really think they think it's useless knowledge but in my view since this is our generation we could find it as another form of uh, intelligence or another form of gaining knowledge you've seen the children in hell they have little games already they even have like that leap pad thing that's like a wannabe ipad literally <laughs> Or they give their iPad to their children. My, that's what my parents do, just to sort of close their mouths. Here, give the iPad. Oh. So. Omelette, get to work. Omelette. It's not only birds. This is Hamlet. <laughs> He's amazed animal psychologists by learning a computer game designed for chimpanzees. Hamlet has to move the cursor into the blue area around the screen. When he does, he gets a sweet. The scientists make it progressively harder for Hamlet, yet he succeeds every time. Can other animals do this? Here's Lex, a Jack Russell dog. Lex is willing, but even after a year, he hasn't quite got it and needs help. <laughs> Hamlet can do it without help and can learn to distinguish between different shapes. This and other experiments have shown that pigs are at least as, if not more, intelligent than dogs. <laughs> Yeah.
and then by applying uh, cotter and or through the polyp, pull it back, and uh, there I'll put it, pull it. seen them it all depends on they need to mix in education with entertainment they're gonna play if it's fun obviously but they, you try to mix in education with it make them you've seen games with stores that rip you like by the heart and then just tear you out try doing that with education somehow form it to where it's actually extremely fun yet extremely engaging in education <laughs>